What's up everybody, welcome back! In this episode, we're going to talk about something that has been going on with an international karate champion, an Amazon best-selling author, and the founder of the biggest karate slash martial art community, JC Inkamp, aka the Karate Nerd. I have been following JC Inkamp's channel before I even knew Instagram existed. Things were all normal until he started changing his karate content. You've changed. It was at this moment I knew that I'd screwed up. From pure WKF competition to sparring with his MMA brother, going to China, visiting Kung Fu Masters, and recently he went out to pick a fight with the Muay Thai champion. Coming from karate to Muay Thai and Hapkido myself, I could not resist making a video and talk about all these things he's doing before the karate community. So I decided to write an email to the karate nerd and ask, what does he think if I do a video reacting to this video? What's he say? Do you think he's even gonna reply? He's like famous. Remind me dojo kun. Courage. Don't be afraid to fail. I sent the email and went into a deep sleep. In just a few hours, I sensed the incoming email with my Zanshin. Even my phone was switched to airplane mode. And Jesse replied, sounds great. Please go ahead and publish it. Looking forward to seeing it. Let's play the video now. Check it out! It all began in 1963. That's when a Japanese karate expert named Kenji Kurosaki was brutally knocked out by a Thai boxer at Lumpini Stadium in Bangkok. People in WKF Karate will be wondering why did Kenji walk so close to the TIE fighter with his head leaning forward. There is a difference between Kyokushin Karate and WKF Karate. Kyokushin Karate do not allow punching to the face. So you will see when Kyokushin Karate fighters fight, they often have their face leaning towards their opponent when they exchange body shots because they do not have to be aware of the punches to the head, neither to say an elbow. It's a habit. But fighting like this with a full Thai fighter, it's suicide. To a Thai fighter, that's a free strike. In contrary, WKF Karateka will be better at keeping the distance because WKF fighters are trained to fight long distance, which is how Jesse fights. For those who are new to my channel, I just want to stress that I'm not saying Kyokushin is better or WKF is better. They're just different. For example, WKF Karate do not know how to deal with leg kicks. And only four months later, the exact same thing happened again, but this time in Tokyo. The same elbow strike. We gotta understand, Muay Thai fighters practice their elbow strike as much as a karate person practice oizuki or gyakutsuki. When you walk into them with your head, hands down, strike into the head with a hook, knee, or elbow is only a natural response. Should karate people practice more elbow and knee strikes? Karate was getting humiliated in public, and Kurosaki did not like where this was going. You see, he was the co-founder of a karate style known as Kyokushin Karate, which was supposed to be the strongest karate in the world. This was not good for business. I know I get defeated often. Sometimes it's easier just to put our personal pride aside and, and pick up from where we left off. So Kenji Kurosaki decided to create a superior version of Thai boxing based on Japanese karate. The result was called kickboxing, and it became a smash hit. Kickboxing no boom na Kickboxing was featured in comic books and cartoons and video games. And by 1970, three different TV channels were broadcasting kickboxing fights all over Japan. There was only one problem. Many of these fights were fake and unfair. They were fixed. I mean, the Japanese literally invited Thai boxers to get smashed by people twice their size, just to prove a point. I know that fight very well. That was Andy Hawk's fight. Andy Hawk is a legend, actually. I wasn't sure the fight was set up 
to humiliate the Thai fighter. Obviously, there was a big size difference, but in that fight, any hawk got smashed in the face over and over again. The only thing that stopped him from getting hit in the face was the referee stopping him and gave the Thai guy a warning. Because Chokushin Karate do not allow punch into the face, at the time, any hawk was getting hit. Any hawk is a real fighter though. After that fight, he transformed himself, learning how to do everything as a stand-up striker. Went on to K1 stage. He did very well and he made karate look good. All across the world, karate people and Thai boxers are still fighting each other. Which brings me to this guy. You see, that is Punasit Kambun. He's been a professional fighter since the age of nine and has over 400 fights on his record. 400 fights and 400 sparrings are very different. Most people do not survive 400 fights in Muay Thai. And that's why I have to fight him because it's time to end this feud once and for all. End this once for all. Go, Jesse. This is where I expected a Muay Thai champion to be waiting for me. But apparently, there is nobody here. Maybe he wants me to get frustrated and emotional, so he shows up late on purpose. Yeah, I know that one. They came extremely late, made you wait until you are frustrated, and they'll position themselves behind the sun so the sunlight will strike into your eyes you cannot see, and he will suddenly attack you with his oar from his rowboat. And suddenly, there he was. The man, the myth, the legend, Punasit Kambu. Wow, look at him! I shake, yeah. Like many Muay Thai legends, if you see them on the street, you wouldn't know they can fight. He just looked like a very humble, skinny Asian guy. Doesn't even look aggressive. I gotta be honest, I'm a little bit nervous. I actually woke up at 4.38 this morning because I couldn't even sleep when I was just thinking about this. So, let's see how it goes. He goes to the center of the ring and starts praying. And I'm just waiting there for us to start fighting. He walks around the whole ring doing this weird ritual. I think it's some cultural thing from Thailand. He goes down on the ground and starts doing this mobility routine in all four directions. Now, I'm getting cold here and I had barely even warmed up to begin with. And he's just stretching and having a good old time. Then he stands up and does even more dancing, just loosening up his joints and getting in the mood for fighting, while I'm just getting more and more frustrated. It's a Muay Thai ritual, they were kind of praying, and traditionally, if you two are fighting, you will do your own dance. Whoever does the best dance gets to repel the evil spirit and gets the blessing from all four corners. I've had enough. It's time to fight. And let's get serious, because when I review his video, I'm all about business. Hold on, Jesse, your stance is way too wide. So wide, all I can see is chopping your leg. Okay, that is just weird. It seems to be like a jab, but, but with the legs instead. I've never seen anything like it. It's like a little touch to let you know that he can either keep the distance, stopping you from moving forward, or if it was a serious tip, you are going to hyperextend your knee and get injured. That's a free kick for him. He didn't kick you though, but that would be a free kick for him. There's no way you could turn your leg around fast enough to check it. And also because you plant your feet down, when he kick, it's extra painful. It will be a very effective kick for him, bad for you. As you can see, both of us are still holding back a little. I try my first move, a simple front leg side kick, and he immediately responds by kicking me in the ribs with a roundhouse kick. This guy has really good reactions. But what most people don't know is that the human brain is really bad at reacting, but really good at predicting. And that's why I need to find pattern. I don't know about predicting, but it's a very common Muay Thai practice. After you kick them, you have to draw your leg back. They will follow up with another kick. So if they were able to check or block your kick just before you land, they will make sure you eat one of their kicks. So far, it's not doing much leg kicks to your thigh or your calf. But your stance, your weight distribution is 50-50. That does not allow you enough time to lift your leg up and do a proper leg check. If he was kicking you, if he was smashing your legs, you'll be in trouble. And there we had it. Did you see that when I threw the high roundhouse kick, he immediately swayed back 
and then came back to the same spot with his head again. That might be a pattern that I can take advantage of. It's not really a pattern, it's a technique. It's a evasive technique. A lot of top Muay Thai fighter from Jockey Gym uses this technique. Instead of blocking a full Thai punch or kick which can hurt yourself, they like to evade the kick. It's like karate, we like to block or move away. They simply shift their body, but they keep their legs where they are. So when they bounce back, they are really close to you to strike you back. You will see famous fighters like Lazila the Eel or Shan Chai. They do that a lot. I'm not sure you can actually hear this, but he's making weird sounds with his mouth all the time. Like, wee woo woo. Wee. That's like saying, wow, or look, awesome, nice move. It's an expression. I don't think we have exactly the same expression in English. Not even in Chinese. Like, us is almost an agreement. Uwe is not. Uwe is like, yeah, like, if they see an opportunity, they like something, they say, oh, we, it's an expression. It's like he's playing mind games with me, but I just try to block out all that noise and focus on finding my own. As a Chinese, we do have another way to distract you with our sound, but only one legend could use it properly. <laughs> He catches my kicks, he throws me down, he kicks me to the ground, and then when I try to go for the clinch, guess what he does? He starts laughing. You were just hugging him, Jesse. You were just hugging him. <laughs> Your hands were down, like you were already in a less favorable position. You know, he wasn't clinching you on your neck, throw you around or anything like that. He was just having fun with you. I see you. I mean, he's just giggling right in my ear. I mean, and then of course, him, he throws me down. Yeah, he didn't really dump you with a sweep, he just pushed you off, didn't he? something really cool that I think you will enjoy. So if you just do a roundhouse and then I do a roundhouse. I asked Punasid if we could compare the techniques of karate and Muay Thai solo. So I would do a technique and then he would do the same technique or something equivalent. We started with the front kick. Your turn. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, I can do maybe two or three. That's good. <laughs> good idea. <laughs> Next, we did the roundhouse kick. As you can see, I am snapping my kicks, but Punasit goes straight through. We continue with the spinning back fist, but since they don't have the spinning back fist in Muay Thai, he had to do a spinning elbow. Go all the way through. There are two ways they do it. You can do it with a straight arm, but a lot of them just swing with almost V-shaped arm. They do the spinning back elbows. I think he's just showing you different stuff there. Next, I did the famous karate jump kick. And the Muay Thai version is a jumping knee. They also do crank kicks. Shen Chai does that a lot. In Muay Thai is actually very common as a push kick. Last but not least, the side kick. Or in Punasit's case, the low kick. Yeah, obviously I think he's just doing something different that you haven't seen before. There is also side kick in Muay Thai. But if you use side kick for Muay Thai, like I mentioned earlier, be careful how you land. If you thrust your kick, you're gonna land sideways and they will chop your leg. Because after you kick the side kick, you're going to have to land sideways with your weight on your front leg, almost 50-50 or even more on the front leg. That's when they chop it. So when you do a side kick, make sure you keep your balance on the back leg. It's funny now that I look back at it. I'm doing the movements the exact same way that I did in the fight. 
chambering my kicks and punches and snapping them back. But he goes straight through. Yet when we were fighting, he didn't. Wait, are you telling me he held back? Because Muay Thai doesn't do any hikite, they don't pull back anything. So when they spar with you, they only do a 30% like. Almost like, almost like they are playing. So a lot of Muay Thai fighters, when they are sparring, you can't even tell if they are good or bad until they start to use their power. You can probably see it on the pad. You don't have to beat the pad, but you can get an idea about how much power they have behind their strikes. I need the rest. <laughs> I can feel it. I felt everything, every moment, as if I was you in that ring. There's so much more karate people can still learn, yet we are not exposed to all these things. And I thank you for bringing this video to us because, because you have a voice, Jesse. You are influencer and you are not stuck in a little, small part of karate. You're exploring the Bonkai in kata, which many people don't nowadays. Like you said, self-perfection versus practicality. I love that about your videos. Everything you are doing in Muay Thai are very basic stuff. Yet, most of us do not know it. I can't speak for Chokushin, but as WKF competitors, once I get into a close distance, people struggle. People struggle because we don't know how to hold up our head with high guard. We don't know how to protect ourselves from hook punches, uppercuts, elbows and knees, and clinches. And there's so much we can learn from, from other styles. And just like that, my fight against the Muay Thai champion was over. As I waved goodbye to Punase, I realized that my mission failed. Karate people and Thai boxers will probably keep fighting till the end of time. In my practice and in my life, there's no fighting between karate and Muay Thai. I've used karate techniques that impress my Muay Thai fellow friends. The coach asked me to show them how it's done, so the class can learn an effective karate sweep. We have the competition committee, we also have the dojo committee, which allows elbow, knees and everything goes. This video points out a lot of things that Muay Thai techniques do well against karate. That's not saying karate is not as good as Muay Thai. When people are sparring or fighting, it all depends on the skill of the individual. People like Conor McGregor fights like a karate person with his hands down, long guards. He values accuracy over speed, speed over power. So he's not all about brutal, vicious techniques. He fights like a karate person, he controls the distance like a karate person, and he does extremely well. In the end of the day, it's all about what you can learn from each lesson. As for myself, Shurokan and Shitoryu, Shitoryu and Muay Thai, Muay Thai and Hakido. In doing all these martial arts, I only have one focus. Can I use what I'm learning when it matters? A lot of Jesse's videos reflect the same thing. Even though he's an international karate champion, his focus is proficiency, practicality, over how it looks. In the end of the day, everybody has their own reason in doing martial arts. And that is my reason. But even though I lost the fight, I did win a new friendship. So maybe I didn't fail completely. Because no matter what martial art you practice, what brings us together is far more important than what sets us apart. What a word of wisdom. Don't we all enjoy what we do? Thank you again, Jesse. Thank you again, everybody who is watching this video. Please remember, if you want to watch more videos like this, subscribe. Click the bell button so you get notified with my upcoming videos. Click like and comment to support my channel. Big shout out to Brittany Outridge who helped me making this video. Thank you very much. Brittany is one of those rare talents who can master both kata and kumite. I will include her Instagram link down below so you can check it out. And of course, as usual, big thanks to Kopkan Karate Canterbury and Christchurch Muay Thai allowing me to video on their location to make this possible. I'll see you next time. Yeah.